What's going on everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA news and today's guest is coming off their first career UFC win. Uh, she defeated Haley Cohen by a unanimous decision over the weekend at UFC Vegas 72. Pleased today to be joined by Jamie Lynn Horth. Jamie, thanks for being here. Appreciate the time. Hi, thanks for having me on. Hey, no problem at all. So let's start here, right? It's your debut. It's an exciting moment. I want to go back in time to when you got that phone call. Just what was the reaction like? And then how did you learn that you were going to be in the UFC? Um, well, I kind of had the a little bit of a shock call. I was uh, not really prepared. I mean, I always thought that, you know, this was going to be the way it would go. And, and I just, you know, when you always prepare to, to make it to that final stage, you just don't really know when it's going to happen. So I, you know, getting that call from my agents was... Uh, you know, like full body shock. I was, I was pretty numb and, and, uh, excited and like so many mixed emotions, but like, I just, I didn't, wasn't prepared. It was a pretty, um, kind of caught me off guard and, and, uh, yeah, here we go. And you mentioned, right, kind of like some mixed emotions in there. I want to ask you actually about fight week because that's usually one of the ones I'm sure that's kind of exciting going through all the different motions with getting the fighter kit and seeing your name on the UFC gear for the first time and doing the media, just being around the apex and everything. I'm sure fight week, your first one, it had to be a pretty fun experience. Yeah, it was pretty, it was a great experience. Like everything was just laid out and organized and, you know, it was pretty seamless. So it was just you know, a matter of following the, following the itinerary and, and like, it's a full itinerary, like it's an experience in itself. Um, you know, there's so much elements to it. You know, you show up, you get a duffel bag just full of stuff. And, um, you know, there's just so many like amazing elements to it and, and so much support and everybody that are a part of the UFC, like all the staff is so encouraging and fist bumps and like, everyone's just happy to be there and, and the vibe's really high and, and it's, and it's just, a, it's an awesome it's an awesome experience in itself, just fight week alone. And then what were the nerves like too throughout the course of the week? Obviously we talked about some of the, you know, the really cool moments there, but were the nerves at all uh, a factor throughout the week? Were you pretty, you know, pretty calm, cool, collected the whole time? Um, you know, I feel like I was pretty cool and collected. I mean, I, I think it just becomes second nature once you've been like, you know, kind of going through these, you, these stages, like, you know, the UFC platform itself, like, the fight week there like yeah definitely some more highlighted emotions and and feelings and nerves for sure but um i feel like most of us as professionals prepare for that moment so you know um definitely like you know the getting closer to it and like when there's telling you we were walking out at 139 like as that time and that clock's ticking like definitely like the emotions run high like right around the fight time but like going down and signing posters and stuff i don't know i just felt like i guess it's like i feel like i've always belonged like it almost just became second nature for me Gotcha. So there's one other thing here then uh, before we get into the actual fight itself. Uh, Weigh-in day, Haley missed weight. I know she, I interviewed her before the fight and she had such a crazy story just coming into this one with all of her fights being canceled on fight week, a, a whole mess there. She was in camp essentially like five months at that point. Not sure if that's what factored into that or anything, but the Jews having a, you know, I know some some fighters, they get really upset when their opponent misses weight. I, I don't know if you're one of those people, just your thoughts on everything that transpired with her missing weight. Um, You know, to be honest, I've never really experienced um, opponents not making weight and myself either, like not making weight. It's just something that I've just always prided myself on is just making weight and, and knowing my body and like understanding that process, you know, obviously there's so many factors into reasoning why people can and can't make weight. You know, Haley came from a, a different situation, so I, I can't speak for her and her experience, but um, you know, I find that I choose to, to not become emotional about things that I can't control. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's very frustrating that, that that was the outcome of it, but you know, we prepared to be there and, and, and my team was prepared to say yes, uh, you know, no matter what the outcome was. Um, and after we made that decision, we weren't, I wasn't going to sit and dwell on it or think about it because I already made the decision to fight. So it is what it is. I can't take it as an excuse. I'm not going to use it as, as an excuse and it's not going to benefit me in any way. So, um, you know, like I, like I said, the team made the decision. We're going to fight. We're going to take the fight. So that kind of just went out the back door and, and it was back to the game plan. 
Gotcha. Now, this one good thing anyway. I mean, with her missing weight, you got some extra money to go home with uh, there. So I guess it's one one good thing with it, you could say. So let's get into this action here now, though. Uh, one of the big things that you were so successful with in this fight was with your kicks to the body. Few high kicks were uh, successful as well, uh, as well there. Was that the game plan coming into this fight was to be effective with those kicks? It seemed like you were having like just time after time, success after success after success with them. Um, you know, obviously with an open stance opponent, um, standing, someone standing southpaw, you know, that, that kind of, that style is, uh, is available. You know, I have long legs and, you know, originally we, we were, um, like our game plan was that we knew that she was probably going to try and bully us up against the cage and, and sort of take away that space. So our game plan, um, naturally would have been to keep that space and sort of keep the distance between us and, and apply that striking, um, range. Um, you know, which I did, I felt like a very good job. You know, I think I took one side kick to the stomach. I don't think any of her other kicks landed. I caught pretty much everything. So, um, you know, like I was prepared in that sense. And, you know, obviously with, with that, having a game plan ABC, like our plan B was that like, once we got our hands on each other, we'd know a little bit, a bit more about the strength and size discrepancy, which, you know, if I'm not mistaken, I think we actually weighed in around the same walking in the cage and, you know, despite her frame size, I think we are very similar in size. Um, and height, I think I was almost taller. So, um, you know, the, yeah, the game plan, um, was to apply those kicks and stuff. It's open. I have good kicks. I just don't ever get to use them that often. Um, and it just so happened to work out that way that, that they were open and they were there and, and my coach was calling for them and they were landing. And there was a moment in the, I believe it was the third round, I wanted to ask you about just so you could uh, address. I'm not sure if you got to watch the fight back or in uh, specifically the UFC broadcast of the fight, but there was a moment, I think it was the third round, Haley was trying to go for a takedown and the broadcast team said that you grabbed the fence and they were you know, a little upset with the, the, the fence grab. Obviously, you were the person inside the cage going through everything. Was there a, a fence grab or any of that going on? I just want to give you the chance just to, to address that there. Um, yeah, I know DC is not a huge fan of the fence grabs and it's definitely not something that I pride myself on doing. It's not something I've ever done in any of my fights before. Um, I don't know for people that are watching and people that haven't been in the cage, you know, it's just a natural instinct sometimes to just grab the cage. And you could see when looking back on the tape, I was very remorseful about it. I let my hand go right away as soon as it was, I noticed and the ref came over and said something and I pulled my hand away and I said, I apologize. Um, obviously it's not something I'm not a cheater. I'm not looking to cheat. You know, if I could take it back, Obviously, I would. And if there was a situation where they wanted to just take us and put us on the ground and start there, I would have done it. I was taken down other times in that fight and during that fight and I got right back up. So do I think that I was trying to avoid a takedown um, by cheating? No. Do I think that well, going back and looking at it, it's blatant that I may have that I may have grabbed the fence for a split second. Yeah, it is. It's obvious. I'm not going to say I didn't do it because I did do it, but it was not an intentional fence grab, clearly so. Yeah, I understand. And that is like a natural instinct, too. I always say that, too. Like, hey, just put yourself in the fighter's shoes sometimes there. That's kind of the natural yeah. thing to, to, to hold on there. I, I understand there. Um, let's talk now, though, uh, towards the end of this fight here. It's a very close fight. We mentioned the success you were having with the kicks. Haley was kind of going a little bit more uh, clinch grappling heavy. Uh, very, very close technical fight there. When the fight was over, were you confident that you had the win? Was there any doubt in your mind that, uh, you know, maybe things could have went the other way? Obviously, the judges had it 29-28, all three of them. So, obviously, very close fight to score. Um, to be honest, I actually thought that, you know, we did enough. My coaching staff is, was on it right after the first round. My coach said we had that we won that round after the second round. He said it's pretty close. You know what I mean? The, the commentators also agreed. So did her corner said, you know, second round was super close. Um, and then going into the third, I knew I did enough. I, my body language was more active. I was landing more, more of the significant strikes. I was hitting the body. I was hitting the head, you know, sure. She, you know, she got a takedown or so. Um, but a takedown is just a takedown. If there's no damage occurred or punches after that, I mean, I was throwing elbows from the bottom. So, um, I was pretty confident that, that I did enough. Um, you know, I, I, I felt like, you know, the control time, sure. She, she had a little bit more control time, but I think I landed more significant strikes. Um, to the body and to the head, and and I did a better job, um, you know, staying active and showing my body language. I wasn't tired. I wasn't looking at the clock. Um, you know, I I've you know I feel like I did a uh, did more of the work, and I felt pretty confident. I had my hands raised. I walked around the cage right after to celebrate. And speaking of celebrating, there, what was the celebration like after that first UFC win? I'm sure the emotions were very high, and it had to be a great moment afterwards. Yeah, you know, it was amazing. The, the Apex, they, those guys moved us along real quick. It was great. They they got us in. I seen the doctor. I went and I had some photos. I had an interview and then I was up on the broadcast table. 
Um, and then I was put into a private car and taken back to my hotel. And, and by three o'clock I was sitting on the Las Vegas strip at a, at a pub watching the fights on the TV there. So, um, it was pretty crazy, like to be in the cage and then be watching it from an outsider's perspective along the strip there. Um, uh, you know, I had about 20 friends and family come down, you know, seven of them bought tickets. were at the actual venue to watch the fight. Um, and then we just walked down the strip and, and, um, you know, had some snacks and some treats and, and then just enjoyed and, and chatted and laughed and just spent time with quality time with my friends and family. It's kind of like what I like to do. And you mentioned there going to a bar after, uh, afterwards, watching some of the fights there. What was that like, like when you walked in there, anybody else like, wait a minute, were you just fighting a couple of minutes ago or, or did you kind of just sneak it kind of unnoticed there a little bit? Yeah, I mean, a little bit unnoticed, you know, I'm a, I'm, it's my debut, you know, obviously people are, I'm still new. I, I mean, to be fair, like, uh, you know, a white girl with, with cornrows kind of draws attention to you and a couple of bruises on my cheeks. So definitely caught the attention of a few, a few of the staff and a few of the, the other fighters. There was another guy that came in right after me that fought same bar. So we came over, took a couple of photos and, and all sat kind of close together. And, and um, yeah, you know, people did start recognizing you and, and it's, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool experience to be, to be able to be a part of that whole process. All right, just one last thing before we head out for the day here, kind of a two parter. They uh, brought this up on, the broadcast as well. Uh, you come from a soccer background, so I was just going to ask you quickly to just to talk a little bit about the soccer background, how you enjoyed playing that sport. But I thought they mentioned something about football. Did you play football or something too? I played a lot of sports growing up. I played a, I played a couple of years of flag and tackle football here in in, in Vancouver. Um, so I have four older brothers that played football, and and uh, no, two of them played football, and and they used to play with me in the yard all the time, beat me up. So um, you know, being aggressive and 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 athletic was like just kind of part of my upbringing um, and soccer. I started playing when I was five um, and I still actively play, but I played, I did four years of university and I traveled on a few um, premier teams all through uh, Germany, Holland, France, California, Las Vegas. Um, so I, you know, I spent pretty much three quarters of my life playing soccer, thinking I'd be a professional soccer player, walking into martial arts as a cross training piece. And then here I am now fighting in the UFC. So um, you know, I, I always knew I'd be an athlete and playing a sport of some sort, um, but I never thought I'd be a fighter. So it's pretty crazy and pretty surreal to look back and, and think that I was going to go one way and I went left instead of right. Jamie, I appreciate all the time. Congrats on the first win. Uh, last thing before you head out for the day, social media, so people know where to follow you at. You have any management or sponsorships, anything that you got to plug? Floor is yours. Take it away. Yeah, you know, I'm obviously it's Jamie Lynn Horth. It's kind of the thing. I don't really have uh, any sort of nicknames or anything that I'll share online. Um, but, I, you know, I'm a team Iridium. Welcome to the dark side. Uh, Jason House, Jeremy, Lance, all those guys at Iridium, just amazing um, with the work and time and effort that they put in to make this all happen for me um, and support me all during fight week and be there and, and celebrate that win together as a team. Um, you know, obviously I come from a small town. Like I said, it's a huge driving force into the why and who I am as a fighter and an athlete and a, and a community-based, um, you know, person. And, and um, I'm really just grateful for everybody that's helped me along the way. I have amazing sponsors, a long list of them, and I won't even run through. But um, I also just want to give back and say thanks to my coaching staff. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that stepped up and helped out during fight week, you know, put their bodies on the line, took some punches, and, you know, a few of them threw up on the mats for me. So um, I appreciate that. You know, I'm, I'm just very grateful for all the love and support I have, and, and I wish and I hope that this, that win gives a little bit back to the community.